Hi, welcome back. Z transform. Here we are going to look at Z transform of a kosher sequence. Determine the Z transform of the sequence xn equal to a to the n mu n. Here mu n is a unit step function and the square bracket means that this is a discrete function. n is the index. So state its region of convergence. So this is a kosher sequence because unit step function will exist only after n equal to 0 or greater. If, it's, if the value of n is less than 0, the function mu n equal to 0. Therefore, this function is known as a kosher sequence. So once you multiply mu n with a n, still we get a kosher sequence. So a it can be either 1 or less than 1 or greater than 1. So it depends, in, depends on the value of a. a to the power n can either increase rapidly or decrease rapidly. The definition of Z transform is given as follows. Z transform, this Z transform of Xn. This is normally a time domain function with index value n. And these are discrete functions. Because of that, we put square bracket here. And once you do the Z transform, you get a continuous function. That's why we have a curved bracket here. Uh, X a circular bracket here x capital x simple x become capital x uh, likewise you normally when you write in frequency domain you put capital x and the z transform z equal to the definition of z transform is uh, summation of n equal to minus infinity to plus infinity xn the function here multiplied by z minus n z to the power minus n so this is the definition of the z transform also, we can write it like this, xn, x square bracket n, z transform will become capital X circular bracket z. So, discrete function become a continuous function here. Okay, let's see the example given, xn equal to a n mu n. What we need to do here is to apply the transform definition where xn has to be multiplied by 0 to the minus n and get the summation. So let's write it. So therefore capital X is z, circular bracket is z, is equal to summation and xn will be replaced with a n mu n, a n to the power mu n and z minus n. So we have this function mu n here but uh, if you think over here basically mu n is a step function so it has values only from 0 therefore the values starting from minus infinity to minus 1 will become 0 therefore we can rewrite this summation to be equal to n equal to 0 to infinity and take off this mu n and then write a n z minus n so basically what we did was we uh, looked at the uh, the function mu n and its characteristics and then uh, change the limits to 0 to infinity and this is a function actually in, in fact this is the geometric sequence with first term equal to 1 because if I put n equal to 0 this will become 1 and n equal to 1 it will become a z minus 1 that means the r or the common ratio equal to a z minus 1 with the first term equal to 1. So by definition of geometric sequences, we can write Sn, the summation of a geometric sequence equal to A times 1 minus R to the N divided by 1 minus R. In this case, R is equal to A to the Z minus 1, this, uh, first term of the sequence equal to 1. And so this is what is given here. So what we do here is that we make the N tends to infinity. When n tends to infinity, what will happen to the r to the power n? Because it uh, depends whether r is greater than 1 or less than 1. If it is less than 1, this will become 0. So therefore, this sn will become 1 over 1 minus r. And r is can be replaced with a to the z minus 1. Therefore, sn, the summation of sequence equal to 1 over 1 minus a to the z minus 1. And this is what we get therefore because x is z is the summation 
is equal to 1 over 1 minus s z minus 1. Also, we have to make sure that we assume that r is less than 1. r is actually a z minus 1. a z minus 1 modulus value should be less than 1. You can see simply here, if you put, an, if you put a value r greater than 1 or r equal to 1, simply, uh, this will keep on increasing. If it is e equal to 1, basically, uh, this becomes 0. But if it is greater than 1, uh, this function will become uh, increase, uh, inc uh, uh, gradually increasing. So therefore, it will uh, tend to infinity. So there won't be any limit there. There won't be any uh, uh, finite limit. So what our condition here is a z minus 1 should be less than 1. Uh, the region of convergence is the annular region z greater than a. Whereas basically you can take z into the other side. That means a less than z or z greater than a. The region of convergence actually uh, we can visualize this one by looking at the circular region z equal to a. Basically in the imaginary, uh, in the complex plane, the real and imaginary, we can draw a circle uh, with a radius a to represent the complex function, complex number z equal to a. So this is the z equal to a complex number. And it says that uh, according to our theory that we got here, z should be greater than a. The values of z should be greater than a for this function to be, uh, this uh, is set, uh, r is set to converge, basically region of convergence. Therefore, the values of z which lies Outside this circle are the values, uh, are the region of convergence for this particular case. ROC, region of convergence. Okay, let's uh, look at this function a little bit further. Uh, what we got here is a function in Z domain, which is a continuous function with the region of convergence outside this circle of radius A. And we can write this one as z over z minus a by multiplying, actually by multiplying z. So you multiply up and down uh, a denominator and numerator by z. Numerator and denominator. Okay, let's look at this function further. Uh, we have xc, continuous function, 1 over 1 minus a to the z minus 1 with a region of convergence outside this circular region A. So if you substitute, uh, basically what you do is we multiply uh, numerator and denominator by z. So you get z divided by z minus A. And uh, the function x z will become 0 when z equal to 0. If you put z equal to 0, this will become 0 divided by minus A. Then z is equal to 0. And the function xc will tend to infinity at z equal to a. If you put z equal to a here, this will become a divided by 0. So if you divide any function by any number by 0, it will become infinity. So we get two conditions here. One is z equal to 0, which the function become 0. Uh, function become 0, let's call it 0. And when z equal to a, the function tends to infinity normally we call it a pole. The so 0 at the center here and the function will become infinite for any value inside that uh, case here, inside that uh, uh, on, on this uh, circle. When z equal to a, you get a pole. Thank you.